Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, August 14th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. Our task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all of the barriers within ourselves that we have built against it. That just comes from A Course in Miracles. We each experience a certain level of consciousness with everyone we are relating to. Even though we may wear a different egoic mask when we are relating to our lover compared with our parent or boss, we still are operating from the same level of consciousness, the same base level. We could say a, a light within us is emanating onto everyone in our world through our eyes, passing through a certain filter, depending on who we're with. And this same light shines on everyone wherever we go. If we have a good relationship with our boss, the filter in our mind shines positive particles of that light onto everything our boss says and does. If we have a bad relationship with our boss, our mind interprets everything they say and do through our negative filter. Remove the filter and you will see clearly through the light of pure consciousness what is really going on. Being clear of filters, we begin accessing a higher state of consciousness which starts to manifest the greatest wealth any human being could ever wish for, a true 5D experience of life. Perspective is everything on the path to enlightenment. Our reality changes as we expand our way of seeing others and ourselves. And this gives us the inner space to raise our consciousness. If we wanted to see the bigger picture on everything, where would we look from? From the bottom of the darkest dismal ocean, from the top of a mountain, or from looking at it from the moon? Changing perspective shifts everything, and it is the essential missing component if we want to start manifesting the higher consciousness with any human being in our lives. We can quickly change our perspective in any relationship by tweaking our listening. When we shift how we are listening to people, our minds begin to interpret what they are saying in a different context. Meaning, we could play with listening to what they're saying from their ego's perspective, from what their mom, dad, or family would think about what they are saying, from a harder judgmental opinion in our own heads, or even perhaps from the mind of an angel or a saint. Playing with our listening breaks us free from patterns that the mind gets caught in over time. Often, we do not know that we are in these mental habits and continuously repeat. So you play, play with us over the month. Try to listen to everyone every day as if you were hearing their words from a saint's ears. How would they interpret and even respond to their words and the way of functioning in this life. Playing with perspective makes the entire ride worthwhile. Stop all physical activity, sit naturally at ease. Do not talk or speak. Let sound be empty like an echo. Do not think about anything. Look at experience beyond thought. Your body has no core, hollow like bamboo. Your mind goes beyond thought, open like space. Let go of control and rest right there, Kalapa. The fifth dimension is the portal to experiencing life, as if we were inside the heart of God. The heart of God is the center of the infinite universe, where we are sitting right now. We are in the center of this infinite playground that is all around us. When we get centered in, inf in, in, in infinity, the highest consciousness and the purest love pours through us, and this power 
follows us everywhere we go. There is no fear, no need, greed, or lack anymore in our lives. When we access this heavenly place, it has a power that can produce miracles. It is as if the highest level of heaven we could achieve on earth becomes available to our souls. We clearly see our highest purpose for being here now. When we meet another human being from this 5D connection, they begin to change and start to speak to us, treat us, and look at us as if we are the living embodiment of the divine. We can connect with others in this life on the deepest emotional levels because there is nothing to fear anymore. The ego personality falls away and only the love from the infinite soul pours on through. 5D consciousness becomes our everyday way of seeing the entire world. And we start to integrate a more empowering, loving, and heart-based connection with everyone. The highest consciousness and the purest love are available within us right now. Yet, we probably cannot experience it all the time because the ego mind gets in the way. It is just so ironic. The fish swimming in the ocean is so thirsty. This highest consciousness is at the core of every atom inside of us. Every atom in the universe is guided by it. This great love is guiding everything in this wild and crazy world. We might think it was fear or greed, yet the divine power of love is actually behind it all. It is only the thick-headed belief systems of the ego mind that are blocking the way. If we want the secret to increasing our vibration right now and access the highest level of consciousness on the planet, practice this ritual every day. And the moment you wake up each morning, make the commitment all day long to always, always, always love yourself. Whatever you focus on grows. When your love for you exceeds the ego's limiting beliefs about you, you will fall into the heart of divinity. If you have trouble feeling a deep, real love for yourself, start with remembering someone in your life who, who loved you. Roll back the movie frame by frame until you feel their heart and can see their smiling face. Open up and let that love inside you now. This will help get the rusty self-love wheel moving. When you can love deeply and eternally, you can reach the highest 5D consciousness. The level of love we have for ourselves is exactly the amount of love we have to give our children, friends, and family. When we hate ourselves, we have nothing to give anyone, and we hide away in the emotional cellar. When we honor ourselves, appreciating the good and bad aspects of who we are, accepting our faults and weaknesses as an essential part of being human, we start to create a more loving relationship with and open a doorway to a more enlightened consciousness. Consciousness can only observe what undergoes change. That which is eternal cannot be observed by consciousness or known by it. Unless you meditate on this point, the puzzle will not be solved. Ms. Riddhata. If you feel you have no love truly valuable or worthwhile to give, then do whatever you can today that's going to make yourself feel better about yourself tomorrow. So this doesn't mean taking in those foods or substances that make you feel heavier or lacking love. Choose 
to eat raw fruits and vegetables only, or better yet, do not eat anything for a week to increase your vibration. When we cleanse the mind and body, we'll find that any old belief systems that were keeping this super expansive connection from showing up are melted away. Sometimes fasting is the fastest way to find the highest truth and consciousness of God. Gandhi would fast for days at a time, so would Buddha. So would Maitreya. And it's just like Christ in the desert for 40 days of fasting alone. He wanted to find the highest consciousness inside. When this divine consciousness is felt inside, you will start to see it on the outer world as well. We are the ones that are holding ourselves back. And so we are the ones who can let go of our old habits and start a new way of relating to others and ourselves. Try it for a week. You'll start feeling more free. When your intestinal tract is cleared out, your mind will operate with a clean, clear consciousness and you will naturally experience feelings of being loving, at peace, and free. That's why we have certain things that we've recommended to help with that. So when your mind becomes silent and clear, then there is nothing you will find but love inside yourself. Every negativity we thought we had will be gone. We will only feel a connection with ourselves that is a doorway to enter the divine, the God. If you desire love, try to realize that the only way to get love is by giving love. That the more you give, the more you get. Stranger by the river. Many people spend a lifetime trying to find a relationship that will satisfy. That will satisfy this outer need for love without realizing that the love they seek is already within. The abundance of love that we seek is already found within the consciousness that we are that permit permeates every atom of this universe if we don't do anything different and simply believe in a fearful world accepting that there is not enough love available inside of us we will continue to manifest a life that presents a sense of scarcity fear or lack in our connection that will be our life experience There's nothing wrong with this, just as there is nothing wrong with stepping in a pile of crap every day. It's just why, why would we choose to have this as our everyday normal human experience? Why would we? If on the other hand, we want to be free from our pain and experience that deep down inside, that there is an infinite supply of love at our disposal, then we will need to release the mucoid muck we're carrying, and this will make our every human connection we have been filled to the brim with a satisfying intimacy guaranteed. All of us, through experience, have gone down the path many times of overeating, dogging up our intestinal tracts, clogging them up. Um, We've all gone through all this. Being pulled down, negative emotional path, having to cleanse it all out again. We, We were led, we've been led to have these experiences so we could realize how much easier it was to live in a body that was clean. This has allowed us to easily access a state of pure consciousness because our minds were naturally quiet and at ease. 
When your mind is quiet, you'll find the highest 5D consciousness is already here. It follows you everywhere you go. The enlightened state is much easier to find when you have zero mucoid plaque lining 22 feet of your intestinal tract. Your second brain or even your main subconsciousness brain is in the DNA cells of your gut and heart. So there are certain applications that we use in order to cleanse ourselves physically. When there is love in your heart, then everything outside of you always becomes lovable, vivish. We all want to be appreciated and given great approval for who and what we are all the time. When we have connected to pure consciousness, we are naturally loving us 24 hours a day. We are feeling loved for who we are and loving the other for who they are. Being loved and having our love received by another is what we are all seeking in every relationship we have. When we surrender to being lovable, we instantly find the highway to higher consciousness. When we are truly living from this feeling of being lovable, we see that it's ludicrous to believe that there is a shortage of love in the world. We see that love is found from within and that the more we connect with this loving energy that we truly are and feel love for ourselves, the more we attract love from others and therefore manifest amazing relationships. Consciousness can only observe what undergoes change. That which is eternal cannot be observed by consciousness or known by it unless you meditate on this point and the puzzle will not be solved. Mr. Bedad, there's nothing separate from divinity. Every war, divorce, abuse, and negative situation we see happening in the world is deep down a convoluted, twisted expression of love masked by the mind ego. This love we see has been covered with the armor of fear and hatred because deep, deep, deep down inside, it is deeply wounded. The masks we wear are always to disguise the wounds we carry. The higher consciousness inside us is what removes the ego's mask and lets this divine love inside us come out to be visible. When we approach everyone from an understanding that love is all that we are at the very quantum core, the illusion of separation and desperation is removed and the ecstasy of abundance is revealed for everyone to see. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is to relax our bodies. Walking around with a stressed body is really, really not good. Carrying that stress to the point where you aren't even aware that you're stressed. It begins to break down all of our organs, tissues, biologics, everything. So it's, it's a common practice for those of us who wish to be in a higher vibrational frequency to daily, repeatedly, make sure that our bodies are in a relaxed state. It doesn't mean that you're not, you know, you're off somewhere floating in a cloud. It just means that your body's in a state of relaxation. This way, the grip that we carry, each of us, to hold on to our anxiety, our pain, our frustration, our suffering, is lifted. They don't have a chance to stick to the body because it's so relaxed. And only, see, only each of us with these bodies can release those. No one else can because we carry them. Even if you were hypnotized, you would still keep, you would hang on to those. So it's, it's a process of always letting go. Believe it or not, that's what it is. It's letting go. The body relaxes when we let go. We let go of all of the stresses, fears, anxieties, frustrations, 
worries, and they just fall off. And I'm not saying it's really easy to do that, but what I am saying is, is the more you practice, the more you master it, and then it becomes automatic. So it's just like a, it's like your body. Does any of this, all of these frustrations, worries, anxieties, fears, whatever they may be, and you know, carrying them through this lifetime or other lifetimes as well, do they serve me the greater good? Does worry, stress, and fear serve me the greater good? Does it really do, does it do good things for me? No, it doesn't. Well, then there's no reason for me to carry it. And every time that worry surfaces, the ego mind, worry, stress, and fear surfaces, you let it go. It has nothing to adhere to. And so the body stays in a state of lightness. Vibrational frequency increases. And with the body in a state of lightness, then we move into the now. And the now really is all we have. Most of us spend our time going into the past or the future that doesn't exist because we create our future in the now. So when we move into the now, we still the ego and mind and the subconscious mind. Now, there are illusions. but we still them, which means we step outside of them, which means we have the opportunity to watch them and to see how we can master them. And then once we master them, we use them as allies, we direct them, and then eventually they're no longer needed. When you've mastered your ego mind, you have no fear. That's a given. When you've mastered your ego mind, you have no worry. You have, if, if even a smidgen of stress, you're lighthearted, free-flowing, unobstructed. That, I'd say that's pretty much worth it to discover that. We all have memories, we reminisce, we have our library and our subconscious mind where we go on occasion and we review our experiences. And we, we, we really enjoy you know, reminiscing through some of the wonderful times that we've experienced. And then also we refer to the not so wonderful times to make sure we don't make the same mistake again, this is that we don't make the same boo-boo again. Some of us, though, but we don't stay there. We, we don't stay there. We move forward. Some of us, though, stay there. They, they, they'll, some people will go into that past like it's an elephant graveyard, and they, they, they won't just reminisce. They'll stay there. This is a dank, no air movement, foggy, mid, you know, it's just dank. And, but they stay there so long that they end up dragging that past into a future that doesn't exist, create that future from that past and relive that past in that future. That's why a lot of people will say, where it doesn't matter what we do, we seem to always, for some reason, always end up here. Others of us will wander off into a future that it doesn't exist because we create our futures in the now. So that's where we suffer and stress because we're constantly wondering why, 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 why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? What am I going to do? See, and it's just, a, it's just a basket, a tub of suffering. So the now really and truly is all we have. Now, how do we, how do we move into the now? It's our breath. Our breath is the now. When you focus on your breath, you're in the now. Every single time, 3,000% of the time. You, our, our breath is divine positive energy. 
The soul comes in the body, powers up the body, the lungs begin to produce oxygen. They breathe it in. And we know that if our breath was extinguished, if we weren't able to breathe, we would force the God that we are out of the body. So our breath is the divine positive energy. It is the now. It's everything. It's magical. It strengthens us. Relaxes us, eases us. So every time you find yourself wandering away, as we all do it, we get these thoughts. There's tens of millions of program thoughts floating by in these clouds in the sky. And so what we do is, is that inadvertently we just hitch a ride. And then we go off into all these directions and all these thoughts that aren't ours. So people say, well, then how the heck do you stay in the now? Because we've got all these thoughts coming around. We're grabbing on. We go in here, go in there. We focus on the breath. And it's imperative that for 24-7, we are gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. We maintain a pure, deep, eternal gratitude 24-7. No matter what's happening around you. No matter if all kinds of crap is flying, you're, and you focus on something that you're grateful for. So every time we wander off, it's okay, no big deal. I'll focus on my breath. I'll be in the now. And how quickly is the now? It's the space between heartbeats. Like 1001, now it's a new moment. 1002, it's a new moment. And then 1003, it's a new moment. You can see how it quiets everything to only be in the now, to not project into the future, to not project into the past, to not worry into the future, to not worry into the past, but only be in the now. Quiets all that chatter and that noise in the mind and those millions of, of program thoughts running by. So we have the body that's of light that's not thinking, that's not worried, it's not stressing, it's not fearing, and that we're in the now. Now, we know these bodies that we're in are the earth. And we know that our soul that enters the body is the heaven, so we know that we are literally heaven on earth. And being consciously aware to a certain extent, we know that every step we take, we're creating paradise. We also are shining our light 24-7, 360 degrees everywhere, flooding everything. And this emanates from our God force love light energy within us. So we have a, a God planet paradise that glows and it glows so heavily and so brightly that there's nothing in this universe that can compare to it. But we have an opportunity to look into our bodies whenever we choose. It's just that a lot of us don't have that perspective. We're actually looking out instead of in. So we notice that these, we, we have these um, energy vortexes, wheels of light, seven different colors running from the tailbone to the top of the head. These are important to understand what they mean. They're etheric, they're on the spiritual plane, the etheric plane, just like our gods are within us. So they're not something you can pick up and touch and move around. But when we have that understanding, it's, you know, we, we then know that it is us, the God, that flows through these energy vortexes. 
which means we flow everywhere. All the blood vessels, all the organs, everything, right down to the quark and quantum, we flow through it. We, we also, as the gods in these bodies, flow through all of the emotions, all the feelings, everything, all perspectives. This is why it's so imperative that we begin turning within and connecting with our gods because then we will start learning that we are the power of healing. There's many things connected to going within. So as we, as we go through the red wheel of light, the root chakra, it sets it to tailbone. That deals with our survival, our you know, money, food, water, clothing, shelter. It's our survival. Now, if you were to take a bunch of us and drop us off in the middle of nowhere, in a wilderness, and we were told that we would have to survive for a period of, say, six weeks, and we would only have the clothes on our back, so we would rely on each other to save each other. Any of us that would panic would perish. It's, it's been a proven fact that's happened many times. And the reason that happens is, is because of fear. And fear is an illusion. It's a thought that has no power. We're the ones that give it the power. So we embrace the fear and it becomes our reality. So therefore it stops our survival. You see how crucial that is? So when you experience fear, you ask yourself, why am I, what, what is, why am I experiencing fear? What's, what is it that, that I'm fearful of? See, it's going within and it's facing with this fear to determine exactly why the ego mind, believe, why you're so upset and fearful. What is it about? And then you go to the solution, the heart, the root, and then it just vanishes. Now we move to the orange wheel of light, the sacral chakra. This is our pleasure, our sexuality, our fun, our joy, bliss, happiness. Where in this life we've all experienced where everything just falls into place, just clicks. It's wonderful. We aren't even thinking about it though. It's just happening and we're, we're enjoying it. But see what happens is, is that another illusion comes in, guilt. So we start feeling guilty for enjoying ourselves. We start feeling guilty for having such a wonderful time. Then we tell ourselves, well, I, I know this is gonna last forever so I might as well enjoy it while I can. You see, we, we manifest everything, so we manifest pulling ourselves right out of this joy and this freedom and this free-flowing because we believe we don't deserve it. That's just crazy. That's all about our self, our self perspective. And, and, and the interesting thing, it is our natural state of being to be free, footloose, fancy free, and enjoy our lives. Every moment we're in these bodies. So that's what guilt does. Then we move to the yellow wheel of light, willpower. A lot of people have willpower to lose weight, you know, willpower to do this, do that, stick to this, follow through. But when, as soon as they start having any shame, they lose, it blocks the willpower. It's like someone who's, you know, morbidly obese, and they put their, they say, I'm, they're telling someone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this weight. And that's their willpower. That's their self-conviction. But then the other person says to them, well, you're just way too fat. You're never going to lose the weight. You might as well just live with it. And so that causes shame. And the shame stops them from executing their willpower and losing the weight. Then we go to the Emerald Green Wheel of Light, the heart chakra. This is our ability to love. And our ability to love is blocked by an illusion of grief because we don't know who and what we are. So when we don't know who and what we are, 
we generate, the ego mind generates grief. And I'm going to tell you, when you're in grief, you're incapable of love. Then we move to the blue wheel of light, the throat chakra. And, and this is our vocal cords, communication. So it deals with our truth and that it is blocked by our lies. And then we move to the indigo wheel of light, the third eye chakra. This is our insight, intuition, kind of, you know, knowing things at times. And what interferes with that is that l illusions come in between there. So th they distract and they cause us not to focus. And so they block our insight. Illusion blocks our insight. Then we go to the violet wheel of light, the crown chakra, sets the top of the head. This is our ability. This is our direct connection to the divine. The divine who, who is the God that we all are within these bodies. Now, that's blocked by ego attachment. Ego attachment, that's what that's blocked by. The ego starts interjecting things of insecurity, and then it blocks our direct connection to the God within us. Now, we're energy free-flowing, the gods that we are, omnipotently powerful, pure, deep, eternal love. So we flow through these conduits, and, and that, therefore we know. You see, when you plug into the God, you know all there is to know about your body, inside and out, head to toe. Call it a benefit of making the decision to go within and stay within. So we're like an energy fountain. Seriously, we have our divine positive energy for the body, the breath, and then the God within that flows through these energy vortexes, these chakras. And so it goes up, down, around, and just continues in that flow. Now, we can hold ourselves whenever we choose. So we hold ourselves at the top of the head. And we are love, we are God, and we are one. And we compress ourselves into pure liquid energy and we pour ourselves over the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is very important to us while we're in these physical forms. Reason is, is that when it's fully functioning, healthy, happy, it connects us to all the particles of existence. All that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. So it's, 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 it is very important to us. When we pour ourselves as pure liquid energy over the pale gland, you view the pale gland however you choose through your heart, mind, some motion picture. I view it as a rose by a green bowl. And as soon as I pour myself over it, it transforms immediately into this massive, fully bloomed rose, multicolored petals, sending out shimmering, almost like a sparkle, energy field that comes and literally blends into us, saturates us. And the fragrance is absolutely phenomenal. And when, when you receive this from the rose, or whatever it is you see to be the pineal gland, it's astronomical. It is it is the highest of the highest, highest, deepest, 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 purest, 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 eternal love. It's, it's just absolute. No doubt, no judgment, nothing. Absolute pure. Absolute pure. And then you discover is that it isn't coming from outside of you. It's coming from inside of you. And the rose is a reflection of the God that we all are. Now, we have, we have parts of ourselves, parts of all of us, that are asleep. Doesn't mean they aren't with us. It just means they're asleep, so they don't hear us. They're with us always. There are other parts that are awake to a certain extent. We reach out to the parts that are awake, the parts of us that are awake. 
like all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, including the ones on this planet. Yet, only those that are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, 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 deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, 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 deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and the complete liberation of this planet. Now, they come in the Googleplexes. One Googleplex fills this universe without even an inch of sacred space to spare. Now, they come in trillions of Googleplexes from trillions of planets in every direction. Like the ones on this planet that we're kind of familiar with, the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, and the minotaur. Many, many, many more. Now, with these eyes that we have with these bodies, we only see 1% of what is. So they come in you know, shapes, color, sizes, configurations, and forms that we just don't see. And in the Googleplex is there with us now consciously. We call upon all the off-worlders, all the galactics, all the celestials, yet only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. Now, we're only familiar with a smidgen of them. Over a thousand travel through this solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universes every day. And the ones that we're somewhat familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Felines, the Zeta Reticuli, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Albion, and many, many, many more. Now, they've been assisting us in our evolution. Uh, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. And in the trillions, they are with us now consciously. We call upon all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, the dark and beneath earth. Yet only, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest, of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love, and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, forming the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And they come into billions and they're with us now consciously. Call upon all of our loved ones, all those who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. Yet, only those who are consciously aware that they are of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, for me, the circle of light and complete liberation of this planet. And in the billions, they are with us now consciously. We call upon the archangels, cherubim, seraphim, archetypes, ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, Saint Germain, Christ, El Moria, Vedantia, Tel, Thoth, Yahweh. Yeshua, many, many, many more. And both of them, ascended masters, dark angels, cherubim, seraphim, and archetypes, only those who are consciously aware that they're of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal love and of and from the highest of deepest, deepest, deepest eternal gratitude can be with us in this now, in this meditation, form the circle of light, complete liberation of this planet. And some much higher vibrational frequencies of deep eternal love, gratitude, and peace. Now, the archangels, their civilization have vibrated at a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. We do meet with them 
um, off and on through many lifetimes. Uh, we talk with them, we interact with them, but we don't really zero in on it till after we've interacted with them. And then we have this feeling of bliss, this experience of bliss. And they have the same message, it's just delivered to us in endless ways. That it isn't it magna gloria, stupendous, phenomenal to be alive in these bodies. And that is bliss. Now they can surround any one of us at any time in the tens of thousands because of their vibrational frequency. They can hold a large number in a small area. Now, the Ascended Masters, they have mastered ascension into physical form, out of physical form. They hold pure God form, pure consciousness. We have ascended into physical form, are mastering physical form, creating our experiences to perfect our creation. So we're all gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand, in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify and it continues to expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This circle of light, the light emanates from the God force love light energy within each and every single one of us. It is so brilliant that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a billion trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. We are flooding this planet head to toe, inside and out, 24-7, infinity, with this deep eternal love. All of our brothers and sisters, awake or asleep, all life, the highest supreme value in the universe is, we are flooding it with this pure, deep eternal love. Now we begin to ascend above the planet. We're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. It's everywhere. It's reflecting everywhere. Trillions of flashes, multicolors, vibrant. And so we look at the, the, the reflection points, and we notice that they're little teeny microscopic mirrors, perfectly etched. And so we go into those, and we discover that all of us forever are being students and teachers of each other. We're either a student, a teacher, a teacher, or a student, or both. This goes on all the time. Whoever walks into your life, whoever you see, whoever you're viewing, or whatever you're viewing, there is a message. It can either be that you're learning something, or it could either be that you're teaching something, or both. This is phenomenal. To know this through the heart-mind. We continue to ascend above the planet. We're immediately met with emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that from head to toe, inside and out, in the eternally infinity, we are completely protected with this white fire armor. It emanates from the God force love light energy within us. This armor is way beyond, you would think, on this planet of 
tank armor, body armor, any of that, way beyond. And nothing, nothing can penetrate it. No lower dark matter frequencies, survival matter frequencies, no demon attachments, no attachments, period. Nothing can harm us. Nothing. Yet. Only you. Only you. Only you have the power. That if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, greed, envy, hurriedness, stress, fear, anxiety, worry, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, not so, to allow all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then you have demon attachments and attachments. Then you have the lower dark matter, survival matter frequency. Then you have all that attachment. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light, the purple transmuting flame and the violet ray. We created both of these to remind us all that we bring in the purple transmuting flame, we transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, we send them to pure consciousness where they are no more. The violet ray follows right behind. This is a column of light that we created that reminds us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony of the highest, the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest eternal love. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column of light that we created that reminds us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain and the rainbows. The sun sets and the sun rises. The oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the mountains, the soils, the skies, the clouds. We are literally everything, and everything is us. So the next time you see a sunset, or a sunrise, or a rainbow, or a starry lit night sky, it is you. You're the beauty. You're the majesty. You're the spectacularness. You're everything. God within that body is everything. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form, hover effortlessly above the body. If we're carrying physical form, the reason we do this is because we can. We come in immediate contact with this massive crystal and light tower that we created it is larger than this solar system, and in the center is this massive oblong sphere. And in the center of the sphere is this golden white ball of light that's surrounded by numerous vibrantly colored rings of light. Now, just the golden white ball of light is larger than all the planets in this solar system combined. And it is pure deep eternal love and it is flooding us all well life's the highest supreme value in the universe then comes the highest of the deepest purest eternal gratitude then peace then well-being great wealth great abundance great prosperity Gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence. It's endless. And then we discover that it isn't outside of us. 
it is a reflection of the gods we are inside these bodies. Now at the top of this crystalline tower, column, is a golden ocean. We designed it so that golden ocean, which is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest eternal love, comes flooding down, saturating and flooding and bathing us all 24-7, as it's doing right now. Now, we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of the golden ocean. Drops are the ocean, the ocean's the drops. The only, the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere, set center circle. We created this sphere over three and a half years ago. It houses all of our meditations, <clears throat> excuse me, in high vibrational frequencies so they don't dissipate or fade. Hundreds of millions of us, over a billion of us on the world every day with the highest of the highest highs of intent, of pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. And that's what's flooding us constantly. That's what is here now. That's what's bathing all of us, the gods within us, a reflection of the gods that we are. Consciousness can only observe what undergoes change. That which is eternal cannot be observed by consciousness or known by it unless you meditate. On this point, the puzzle will not be solved. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. You become yourself only when all the cells that you have been carrying all along are dissolved. You become yourself only when there is really no self left, but a pure nothingness. Then the circle is complete. You have come to the ultimate nothingness, fully aware. You have become a witness of the whole play of this life, existence, and consciousness. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night and the following morning, and we will return here Sunday, August 15th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call.